What's up, YouTubians? Gary here of VW Jawbreaker. Welcome back to another blistering day of heat here in Florida. This is just miserable. It's like 9,482 degrees or something. I, 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 I can't even tell you anymore. It's so hot. It's miserable. Summertime. It is what it is. But man, check out Jawbreaker. And my feet burning. Isn't she looking nice? She's loving it. Absolutely loving how nice she's looking lately. She's got a nice stance to her. Looking sharp. So, a little bit to talk about, guys. I got the title work done on the 58. And lo and behold, wouldn't you know, it's not a 58. Man, it's a 60. So, upcoming on the 60, I'm starting to pick up a little pieces and parts here and there. Got a few things coming. And we need to get to work on that thing soon. But first, I gotta finish Aaron's engine. So as it sits right now, uh, you wanted to see the color combo of the blue with the chrome and yada yada. I'm still waiting on the fan shroud. And as soon as we get the fan shroud in, we can go ahead and get carburetors on and get ready to go ahead and do a fire up. So I will bring you guys along for that. Because honestly, who doesn't like to hear a new engine fire up for the first time? Do that 20 minute cam break and where your heart just stops for 20 minutes straight. Pretty much. It's that anticipation of if anything is going to go wrong, it will go wrong in the first 20 minute cam break in. Usually. For the most part. Don't quote me on it. I don't know crap. So stick around. We're going to have some fun today. Right, it's been a few days. I even did laundry. What can I say? Life's been busy and been waiting on parts. Cheers to the morning coffee. Ah. So we finally got Aaron's fan shroud in. Here we go. Aftermarket fan shroud. So therefore, there's always something going on. And here's what's going on. For one, we're not sitting all the way down right here. For two, if you look right here. There is a gap in between oil cooler adapter and the fan shroud. I'm not sure if you can see that. Hold on. There we go. See that gap? So what I did is I used CAD and designed a piece. CAD as in cardboard aided design. So what we're going to do is this will slide right in. go around that and that will fill the gap now unfortunately unfortunately all I have is some aluminum plate I don't have any steel I'm out of real thin steel so what I think we'll do is we'll go ahead and try to make this and then what we'll do is instead of welding it in place not to mention, he's got a nice chrome finish. I don't want to take a chance of ruining the chrome finish. I don't know if he's going to keep this chrome, if he's going to wrap it, paint it, powder coat it, draw on it with crayons. I don't know. So what we can do is literally just pop rivet it in place there. And hopefully that will get her straightened out. And it's ironic enough that we're doing all of this actually started working on this last night, pre-recording. And then my buddy's video, Haptic Garage, popped up where he's doing all this. And I'm like, perfect timing, buddy. Perfect timing. I'm glad you're covering a lot of that because you'll go into a lot more detail about it than I will. So what I'll do is I'll drop a link below to his channel and you can see all the awesome stuff that he's been doing for the cooling stuff. Now, another thing is if you notice, this is your backing plate for your alternator, right? And at the bottom, you've always got that little air flap, little cutout. And hold on. There we go. Well, you guys went for a ride there. 
if you notice, really not much of a hole. So we're gonna have to. What I have to do is make more noise. What I have to do is actually take. You can see that little spot that I've colored out. I have to take and actually trim that out. So what happens is that is a low pressure on the bottom side of your fan. So air actually gets pulled through your alternator or generator and then gets directed down and diverted down so it helps keep everything cool. Again, check out Haptic Garage. He's got a better explanation than I do. So we're going to get to work on this. And let's see how well this turns out. What's the worst that can happen, right? Oh, well. All right, so I got my piece in place, and I have a line mark so I know about where I want it. What we're gonna do is flip it over. We're gonna vice, vice grip it in place. Those vice grips won't reach. Let's use the uh, overkill vice grips, why don't we? And I hear the kids screaming. <laughs> Excellent, I'm kinda glad I'm outside. All right, so we got it in our spot. Come right there, and hopefully it's not tight enough. Still on our line? Yep. All right. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and drill a couple holes, and stick some rivets in that bad boy. I, I know, again, I'd like to weld it, but I'm not going to the store just to grab that. We're using what we have. And there won't be anything wrong with using aluminum. Plus, it won't rust. And I won't discolor this fan trail. That's important. And like, great. Probably hold it. Anybody see where that went? Come on. One of the lower drawers was open. So, the one here. All right, let's start with that first. Go from the inside with the rivet. Maybe. Yep. All right, and now that we got that in place, we'll go ahead and drill one more right here, then we can go ahead and move the clamp out of the way. And we're gonna have to move the clamp out. And we need to straighten it just a tad. There we go. Hey, watch your finger. Watch your finger, by the way. All right, so. I don't think I can grab. Yeah, I'm not gonna be able to get the other two from inside. We're gonna have to go on the bottom. I don't wanna do that, but oh well. Trying to keep the lower part down underneath so it doesn't get in the way of airflow and create minuscule amounts of turbulence, but can't get them in there, so we have to do it what we get.
right. Let me uh, stick this on real quick. I want to take a look at what we did. Come with me. Let's take a peek. Let's turn the light on. Can you see in there? Yeah. I think that'll work. Gets it all the way back. Gotta bend that back corner down just a smidgen. We got our cut out there for the alternator backing plate. So now we just gotta trim a little more. It's not quite sitting all the way down. It's close in the back, but not quite. And then, oh, this side's not even in all the way. Oops. Right, popped out. There we go. So the front is all the way down, but this back side's up just a little bit. So we're gonna need to do a little bit more grinding and clearancing. And I think we'll be close to bolting some stuff on here and getting this thing ready to run. Unfortunately, that's about as good as it's going to get. If anything, this back side on both sides, it curves down too far. We got a seal, it's just not perfect. Let's, uh, let's take you off real quick. You can take a peek, see what you think. Hang tight. Grab a light. So we got it seals. It's just this isn't all the way this isn't all the way down. But the head tins right. I'm not hitting there. I'm not hitting uh, slightly on the internal part in there where the case half goes together, but I'm sitting pretty much square there. Sitting pretty square back there. Center's not hitting. Everything's good. We're sitting almost perfect back here. This is just some of the joys of the aftermarket tin. Nothing likes to fit right. So I think uh, I'm gonna try one or two little things. I'll spare you on the details. We'll come back. All right, so essentially we got it about as good as we can get it. Still need the front side to come down a little bit, but what's stopping us now is this corner right here. So what I'm thinking about doing is actually just kind of notching this just a little bit on both sides to get the fan trout to sit a little lower. Because we're not touching in the middle over here and we're not touching on the front side at the bottom either. We've got just, just a little bit of a gap. So I'm thinking if we notch these corners just a little bit, it'll give us what we need. So let's give that a whirl. All 
right, remember guys, a little bit at a time. Nothing extreme, just a little bit here, a little bit there. Ho, ho, ho. That side's fitching mucho better. Fitching? Fitching? How about fitting? I think we're just about there. But doing that little notch right there definitely helped. Problem now is the front side. It's down further. Let's bring you around. Hold tight. The front side is better. We do have a nice, it's down far enough, but I'd want this lip another three eighths of an inch down would be nice. But unfortunately, the curvature of the head tin does not match the curvature of the fan shroud. Let me do some more thinking. The head tin's pretty much where it needs to be. Huh. Huh. Not hitting the case bolt. Oops, I hit you though. Oops, I hit you though. Yeah, we might be hitting the case bolt just a little bit in the middle. Let me keep on. I'll bring you back. Let's go ahead and start getting this alternator together. Stick on the fan shroud. So first things first, we're gonna get the backing plate in order. So we already know that goes down. All right, so that goes down. The spacer must go in there. That helps keep you from crushing it. And here's your front plate. No, wait. It's again. Backing plate, I had it the wrong way. It goes like that. Then your ring, ring of fire. And it goes that way. There we go. So you got your little drain hole down at the bottom. This area right here is for airflow from and the alternator to come through out these back holes and then come out the bottom. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and stick that on. And of course, you've got a washer, a washer, and then a knit. And then a nut. Now, when you crank this together, Make sure that you torque these to 872,000 foot-pounds so everything stays together properly. That feels like 872. All right. Now we will take the nut off the back that comes with the alternator. Stick that off to the side. We don't need it. That's trash. Razor knife. Pull this heat shrink off. That's what keeps in your little keyway. Keep your keyway from falling out. Now I had them pick up a nice scat hardware kit, not a MP hardware kit. I've had better luck with a scat than the MP. Comes with a couple wavy washers. This slides on. The keyway won't stay in place. That's nice. Come on, keyway. Come on. <sighs> Sometimes these like to fight you. Nothing is ever simple as bolt together. That's why they call it engine building and not engine assembling. Heard that before? go just need a little love and now I'm going to on the stock alternator or generator I should say there was two shims put two shims there and then our fine line the fan goes on put your little wavy washer on and your nut
That doesn't feel right. Yeah, that's not, that's not enough. We need a little more shimmage. A little more shimmage. Actually, what we could probably do is that back shim, the wavy shim. I don't like doing that. Let's do it this way. A spacer. Let's just try the spacer. a little much. And we've got really I would give it a try. You can see with my fat head in the way? No. Alright, so that one, that's a no-go. All right, that's flush. So what we did is we ended up putting three spacers back there, the nut, and then this gets torqued to 7,928 foot-pounds. And we rub. All right, need more spacage. Give that a spin. Fan's pretty straight. Fan is pretty straight. Try not to mess up his pretty ultimator. So now we got the fan shroud. Drop that in, just like and so. And we've got our four screws. Well, I've got some chrome to wipe down, don't I? Huh. Got my fatter screwdriver here. I was awful busy this morning. And now, hopefully this is the last thinking time. Plus, I'm going to go ahead and stick the alternator strap on. Strap on. Hmm. Anybody see my uh, socket and wrench? Oh, there's my wrench. Hey, there's my socket. I know one of you guys had it somewhere. Alright, give that a whirl. No spinach. Man, that's nice. Very nice. All right, I've not messed with one of these alternator style belts yet. Or this type of tensioner, I should say.
Put that on. Put that on. And the mofo don't fit. Let's try it this way. Run that. Oh, you know what? I need to tighten that front one too. Yeah, it's a little tight. Let me grab my ratchet. We'll turn her over. I had the same issue with that scat one I had. Yeah, I need my 30 millimeter, not my 33, 36. That worked well. Try that again. Let's go this way. All right, it's in the grooves on the tensioner. There we go. Now we'll just bring that down a little bit, snug that up. I think we'll be all right. You know what size Allen that is? I don't know. Let's try an eight. No, it's not an eight. Dang it. How about a seven? Wow. It's standard. It's standard, go figure. Not quarter, five sixteenths. Interesting, the camera shut off. So we got that set. It's actually a five sixteenths. I guess that's just the size MST decides to use. So now that we got that set, I'm gonna go ahead and spin it over. Make sure the idler pulley is lined up. It's almost dead center. Yeah, I might try to bring that out just a smidge, but we'll go ahead and wipe her down. And we'll shoot him a picture or something. The joy about Chrome, man. Shows everything all the time. Nice little microfiber. There we go. Microfiber and some Windex. Need to find a bolt for both sides of the shroud. get you home but Rome does look nice. I actually like running 10 millimeter bolts on the sides and then especially if you have a carburetor you're running duals makes it so much easier just to grab a 10 millimeter wrench and tighten that puppy up. And we'll put one on the side. All right. You can find the ultimate nut. You see how careful I can be without scratching it. All right. Do the same thing with a flathead screwdriver. Careful not to mar up this pretty pulley. All right, I think that's good. All right. Well, guys, 
I think that's pretty much a stuffing point for right now. Hopefully you've learned a few things and you guys make this job a little easier for you. It's never easy just to bolt things together and be done. There's always fitment, there's always trimming, there's always, always, always fitment and trimming issues. And aftermarket stuff never goes together right. Remember that. So on this, we got it as close as we can get. I do want to see if he wants me to pick up some sheet metal on the other side. I can fill in those little those little notch notch outs. I uh, think it's for the heater flaps or something. We don't run those in Florida. I don't even know if anybody in Florida runs thermostat and flaps. Not that I've seen anyway. No, nobody I know. Unless they haven't told me. But then again, what do I know? Anyway, guys, be kind to one another. Be good. We'll catch you guys on the next one.